Welcome hackers. Today I'm gonna to show you how I make my Make It Hackin business card. And this video is sponsored by GLC PCB. They're the manufacturers that I get all my PCBs from. You can get your custom PCBs for as little as $2, so check them out. All right, so inside my box here, I have two items. I have my PCBs, and I also have my stencil for surface mount soldering. Let's check it out. So here I have my business cards. These ones are green, but you can also get other colors. I got them in every color, but today I'm gonna to be making green ones. And then we also have our stencil for surface mount soldering. And that's what the stencil looks like. Uh, what I like to do first is get my components ready. And so one of the tricks that I use is I actually print out the circuit board on a piece of paper. I put the outline as well as the pads. So what I do from here is I will use some scotch tape. I'm just gonna tape this to the mat kind of lightly so it doesn't walk anywhere. And then I have this tape. It's actually used for transferring decals uh, for vinyl, but it's like a really tacky tape. And I'm gonna pull some of this out. And then I place it on top of the design like this. And I put the sticky side up. And then I hold down this tape with scotch tape. All right, so now I have a sticky surface. So uh, from here, I actually put my components directly on here. And that way, when I'm placing the components on the board, I'll uh, transfer them from the big design to the actual circuit board. All right, so now we have all of our components. We have our LEDs, our 555 timers, our decay counters, capacitor, resistors, buttons, and the battery holder. All right, so the next thing we're setting up is the ability to lay the solder paste on the printed circuit board. So uh, one of the ways to do this is to kind of like make an outline of circuit boards around the one that you want to do. Uh, you want to make sure that they're the same height now, since these are one millimeter thick, um, the standard is 1.6, so I can't use my other ones, but um, so you do something like that, put some tape down to kind of hold the outline there. So you do something like this, something like that, okay. Put some tape down here as well. And that way, uh, if you're just doing, this isn't maybe necessarily just for one circuit board, but if you're doing more than one, this is good practice, and I like to do it anyway. Um, that way, once you're done with this circuit board, you can take it out and you can put the next one in there and it's good to go. All right, so next we set up our stencil. So here's our stencil. It's basically gonna lay down uh, like this, right, on our board. Um, the thing that I like to do first is clean it with alcohol. So I dip a little bit onto here and I will just kind of go over it, both the front and back. Um, when you do this, you make sure that you don't want to use like a paper towel. A paper towel will um, get its little fibers caught in the stencil. So you want to use something that doesn't have like those little frizzies or something. And here there's different ways to line it up. For me, I kind of just eyeball it. Um, some manufacturers will have marks called fiducials uh, that you can line up. But here it's pretty easy. It's a relatively small board. So I can just line it up by eye. And then once I get that in place, get a piece of scotch tape and lay it down like this. Okay. So that way when you lift it up, you can take it out, put it down and squeegee. All right, so now the next step is to get the solder paste on here, right? So I use this stuff. It's both got lead and tin. It's a 6337 mix. It says no clean solder paste. And you really don't need too much solder paste. So I'm just gonna pour some out. It's probably good for now. And then you can just use a sort of card like this to squeegee it on there. So here we go. You can kind of see by eye if it's getting in the holes or not. So you kind of just go over it a few times. 
All right, so that's how you apply the uh, solder paste. And then that way you can just lift up the stencil, take the circuit board out. And now if you look at the circuit board, there is solder where there's supposed to be solder. All right, so now that we have our solder on our business card, we're gonna transfer the components from the tape to the business card. All right, so with these LED, and I like to use um, this type of tweezer for this thing. It holds it by default and then you press to let go. All right, so on the back of, or these tiny little LEDs, it's kind of hard to tell the polarity. So on the top, there should be a green mark. And on here, it's on the right-hand side. The green mark is ground. So on my business cards, the ground's on the left. So I have to place it like so. You don't have to get these necessarily 100% in exactly the right spot. When you put this PCB in the oven, it will help align the components. It won't necessarily get them perfect, but it will do a good enough job. All right, so now we got the LEDs on. So now I'm gonna do the 555 timer. Um, on these circuit boards, there's a little dot, as you can see up in that corner. And there's a dot on the top, so that lets you know which way to place it. So it goes like that. That's an eight pin integrated circuit. Here's our decade counter. And so then I place it down like this. Battery holder. Now let's do our button. So the capacitor and the first two resistors are tied to the 555 timer and they kind of set the on and off time, otherwise known as the duty cycle. They set that up for the 555 timer. So the 555 timer will send out a pulse every so often and you use two resistors and a capacitor to basically tell the 555 timer how often to do that. And so the duty cycle will tell the pulse how long to stay off how long to stay on and the delay in between. And that's all figured out from the components that use the values for the resistors and capacitors. And there's, you know, formulas that you can use, but there's also online 555 timer calculators that you can sort of play around with and you can figure out what values you need. So that's kind of what I did for here. These other resistors are current limiting resistors for the LEDs. So now we have all of our components on our PCB and the next step is to uh, heat it up in our oven and we'll pretty much be done after that. All right, so this is my reflow oven. I actually learned about it from a local makerspace that uses one just like it. So this is a Cuisinart. I can list the model number later. I don't know exactly what it is right now. So what I do is I hit convection bake. Um, that flows the air around, so I hit that. And then I turn it up, or I gotta press temp, and then I turn it up to 425, 425 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I hit start. And it will beep when it's done, so we will come back when it's done. All right, so I place the circuit boards on top of some like regular circuit boards that I don't really use just to kind of keep everything level. Um, and then I'm going to open up the tray and insert it in there like that. But yeah, this is how they're laying on there like that. All right, and now I set a timer for five minutes. You can see the solder paste is kind of flowing a little bit, right? All right, so our time is up. So what I do is I hit the stop button and then I just open the door and that stuff's really hot and everything like that. So um, I'm just gonna let it sit right there. If I were to take it out right now, it might bump uh, some of the pieces and they might uh, sort of get dislodged. So uh, what I do is I kind of go in for a close up and I just kind of see if anything is totally off that stuff looks fine that stuff looks fine um so what i'll do is i will just wait uh probably about like 10 minutes or something just when this stuff gets cooled down and i will take them out all right it's been 10 minutes and here we go
All right, so now we have our two business cards out of the oven and got a couple of batteries here. These are CR1220s. Again, so let's just take a look at this up close. By the way, I don't know if I showed you the back yet. It just kind of says, how does it work? As well as a quote from Carl Sagan saying somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and put in a battery. And push the button. We can see here that the LEDs are lighting up. This is the yellow one. And you know, it is, it's not super bright. Um, so, you know, maybe less resistor values could achieve a brighter LED pulse, but that's how that works. So you press the button and the LEDs do the little Knight Rider theme. Uh, let me know what you think you'd do different. Uh, this has been sort of an evolving project that I've worked on. I would like the LEDs to be brighter. There's the project. Again, ordered these from jlcpcb.com. Very happy with them. Go check them out. And yeah, talk to you guys later.